Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. Yeah. The Kraft Cheese Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products, presents Harold Perry as The Great Gildersleeve. Kraft brings you The Great Gildersleeve every week at this time, written by John Wheaton and Sam Moore. We'll hear from The Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. You know, there are actually a hundred different ways to tempt family appetites with Pabstet, the delicious golden cheese food. And since there's only time to tell you a few, here goes. Serve baked potato with a golden Pabstet cheese sauce melting into the potato's mealy goodness. Spinach creamed with Pabstet is another delicious treat. Dates or prunes stuffed with Pabstet make a grand nourishing salad. And casseroles of macaroni or fish, what grand eating they make when you add the mellow cheddar cheese flavor of Pabstet. For a delightful between-meal snack, serve graham crackers spread with Pabstet or combine Pabstet with jelly for a marvelous sandwich filling. Yes, there's simply no end of ways to please family appetites with the wholesome cheese goodness of Pabstet. So look for the familiar round, flat package on your dealer's shelf. And whenever you can, buy delicious, nourishing Pabstet. Come with us now to Summerfield in the merry month of May. For the first time this season, the sun is hot today, really hot. And life in Summerfield is slowed down to a walk. Birds are singing and children stop to listen to them. Flies are buzzing and people are thinking it's time to put up their screens, but not doing anything about it. There won't be enough business done in the whole town today to pay the overhead on Peavy's drugstore. And the great Gildersleeve, where is he? Well, the commissioner is in his office at the city hall with the door closed, his coat off, his feet up on the desk, the window wide open, the afternoon sun warming his back. Under his feet lies a stack of mail, still unread. What he's reading, over and over, is a note from his lady love. He knows it by heart now, every word, and still he reads it, because it seems to bring to him the sweet music of her voice. My dear, dear Throckmorton. Uh. Will you think it's silly of me, I wonder, to write to you this way when I could pick up the phone and call you when I shall be seeing you again tomorrow anyway? Think it's silly? Eve, how could I? It's just that there's so much to say, darling. And when we're together, it's so difficult somehow to find words to say it. I have the feeling at times that you too are tongue-tied, that you'd like to say things that you can't. Oh, that's so true, Eve. That's so true. Why, if I could say the things that are in my heart, I'd be a poet. Anyway, this is my little way of bringing you closer to me when we're apart. And I hope it will bring me closer to you. It's late afternoon now. I'm sitting at my writing desk, the little rosewood one that Mother gave me. And the radio's playing softly in the next room. It's a program that's on every afternoon called Tea Time Melodies. I wonder if you ever listen to it. Oh, I must make a note of that. Tea time melodies. I like to think that you might even be listening to it now. Because guess what they're playing, darling? They're playing tea for two. Oh. Do you remember? Do you remember the first time you ever held my hand? Do I? <laughs> it was before you told me you loved me, even. You held my hand. And you sang it to me softly and so sweetly. Mm -hmm. Upon my knees with tea for two and two for tea. It's me for you and you. Bessie! Bessie! Bessie, what in the name of John Philip Susan? What's going on out there? A truck of some kind with a loudspeaker. Where? Let me see. It's that truck down there with the flags all over it. See, it's got a sign on it. Vote for Terwilliger. Why? Retain she... the incumbent. Vote for Mayor Terwilliger at the primaries on June twentieth. He's given us four years of good government. Let's have four more. Vote for Terwilliger. Retain the incumbent. Retain the incumbents. <laughs> oh, Bessie, pull down that window. Yes, sir. Mr. Gildersleeve, a celebration of some kind? Celebration, nothing. It's a plot. A dirty political plot. Terwilliger paraded that truck past here deliberately. He did it to annoy me. 
He's just trying to get my goat. Well, if he thinks he's going to get my goat, he's mistaken. I'm just good and mad, that's all. Yes, sir. Parading past the city hall like that. Why, it's a disgrace. It's an attempt to corrupt civil servants. That's what it is. He's trying to sway them. It's an outrage. Wonder where you get trucks like that. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve. Retain the incumbents. Is there anything else I can do, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yes, Bessie. If that truck comes by again, don't listen to it. Ignore it. Uh, yes, sir. Mr. Gildersleeve, what is an incumbent? An incumbent, Bessie, is a political slug, a leech. You find him under rocks. Oh, I see. I'm joking, Bessie. An incumbent is anyone who's holding office. You mean like you're the water commissioner, so you're an incumbent. Uh, well, there are good incumbents and bad incumbents. <laughs> well, how do you tell which are the good ones and which are the bad ones? Just come and ask me. Now, get out of here, will you, Bessie? Let me get back to my work. If you don't mind, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'll be out of the office for a few moments. Yeah, I wish you would be. <laughs> now... My dear, dear Throckmorton. Uh, my dear, dear Throckmorton. Uh, my dear, dear Eve. My dear, darling Eve. My dear, sweet, lovely, beautiful Eve. Uh, and she sealed it with a kiss. Right here. <laughs> Hooker, who let you in? Nobody. The door was open. Uh, that Bessie. What goes on, Gildy? What were you... I just happened to be reading a letter. Is there anything wrong in that? Oh, no, no, of course not. Anyone I know? Uh, it was from an old college chum. Oh, I see. You boys must have been very fond of each other. <laughs> Hooker, what do you want? I've come here to give you a word of advice, Gildy. Keep your advice. I don't want any. Well, you asked me to act as your campaign manager, did you not? In a moment of weakness, I did. In a moment of weakness, I consented. Yes. <laughs> now, as your involuntary campaign manager, I should like to call attention to the fact that I haven't observed any campaigning lately. Not on your part. Well, I've been busy. Yeah, I know. So has Mr. Williger. He's been very busy. Only he's been busy campaigning, not lollygagging. Yeah, Hooker, I do not lollygag. Listen. Did you hear that truck just went by? Yes, I heard it. Retain the incumbent. Well, that's what's going on all over. Billboards, throwaways, ads in the newspaper. The opposition's really going to town. They're spending money like crazy. What are you doing about it? I'll do something. Don't worry, Hooker. I'll do plenty when the time comes. When the time comes. I'm just waiting for the psychological moment. Well, kindly let me know when it arrives. In the meantime, you may contact me at Dolan's Pool Room. Yes. Goodbye, lover. Oh. <laughs> Go chase yourself, you old goat. Oh, excuse me, Judge. Good day. Bessie. Bessie, is that you? Do you want me, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yes. Uh, Bessie, uh, do you ever listen to the radio? Oh, yes. My favorite's Red Skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know. Somehow he just kills me when he's being a bad little boy and when he says, How dee doo dee. Honest, I scream. Don't you think he's a scream, Mr. Gildersleeve? <laughs> <laughs> but the program I'm interested in right now, Bessie, happens to be Tea Time Melodies. Do you ever listen to it? Oh, my mom does. She never misses it. Every day at 5.30, she... 5.30? Oh, my goodness, I gotta go. Uh, close up before you leave, will you, Bessie? Mm -hmm. See, the lights are turned off and the window's closed. And uh, don't forget to put the cat out. <laughs> Going now, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yes, an appointment. I, I forgot it, but then I remembered it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if it's General Eisenhower. Turn it off. <laughs> okay. Oh, dear. oh, thank heaven, Uncle Mort. I have to listen to that thing every afternoon. You do not. You can go somewhere else. Leroy, this is a community living room. Marjorie has just as much right here as you have. Oh, yeah? Does she let me stay here when Wally Hoff comes over and they want to sit on the sofa? Wally Hoff has not come near the place in three months. Yeah, but don't you wish he would? I do not. <laughs> Told Wally I never wanted to see him again. You didn't think he'd take you up on it, though, did you? <laughs> Leroy, sometimes I Now stop just... it, both of you. Stop fighting and quiet down. Ye God, sometimes I don't know whether I'm an uncle or an umpire. <laughs> 
I came home to listen to a radio program, and I want it quiet. Do you understand? Quiet. Quiet, Leroy. Ouch! Leroy. I never touched her. Either you sit down and keep quiet or go up to your room. I better go up to my room. <laughs> Miss Marjorie, did you show your uncle what they went and did? Oh, no. What? Who did, Bertie? I don't know. Some men came and they put up a great big billboard. With a picture of the mayor on it. Oh? Where, Bertie? Look out the side window there. Oh! <laughs> have I got to have that big fat incumbent looking at me every morning when I sit down to breakfast? <laughs> By George, I'm going to see my lawyer. I think you should. No, that won't do any good. My lawyer's Judge Hooker. <laughs> Besides, that billboard was just put there to get my goat. Well, ain't there something that can be done? They've gone and messed up the view and all. Yes, Bertie, there is something that can't be done. Pull down the shade. Pull it down and keep it down. Yes, sir. Hey, Uncle, you want to see a card trick? I thought you'd gone up to your room. I did, but I came down again. You want to see a trick? No. All right, take a card. Any card. No, no tricks, Leroy. I have a radio program I want to hear, and by George, I'm going to hear it. Alone. That's no fair. You made me turn off the radio just... Leroy. <laughs> Come along with me, Leroy. Okay, okay. Come on, Marge. You too. Do I have to... You too, my dear. I don't see why I have to pay for everything Leroy does. <laughs> Ooh, it's 5.30. Better turn on the radio. Now, pull up a chair and have a little piece for change. Uh-huh. I wonder if Eve is listening. I'll bet she is. Two hearts that beat as one. <laughs> Radio is wonderful. A W S A U M a Summerfield. Uh, just in time. A tea time melodies, the program originally scheduled will not be heard at this time. Oh. Instead, we present at this time a talk by the Honorable Cyrus P. Tewilliger, Mayor of Summerfield. What? Mayor Tewilliger. I won't listen to it. Don't listen to it, Eve. My very good friends of Summerfield. Well, I'll just listen a little. The time has come. The time has come, my friends, to face facts. The time has come to call a spade a spade. Uh -huh. And the time has come to call my opponent, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, by his true name. You don't dare. <laughs> Let me say first that I have made mistakes in my lifetime. Yeah, you bet you have. I have made serious mistakes. You bet. But... The worst mistake I ever made was appointing Mr. Gildersleeve to fill the vacancy of water commissioner. Oh! You cannot fill one vacancy with another vacancy. <laughs> I found that out. There's such a thing as libel, Terwilliger. I have now to confess to you, my friends, and it pains me deeply to do so. Uh -huh. I have now to confess to you that Mr. Gildersleeve by his record of the past two years, has proved himself a man of many words and little action. A boondoggler of the first water. Boondoggler? That does it. You want action, eh, Mayor? All right, you'll get it. Hello? 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 That you, Gildy? Judge, why don't you answer? Why don't you stop saying hello? <laughs> Listen, Judge, Terwilliger just made a speech about me on the radio. I know. I'm listening to it right now. He called me a boondogger. That's nothing. Did you hear the other things he called you? <laughs> no, I turned it off. <laughs> Listen, you old rooster, get busy. Get up off your tail feathers and get down to that radio station and tell him I want to answer Terwilliger. But, Gildy... You... I want you to arrange for him to put me on the air tomorrow night. But, Gildy, do you realize... Don't that... argue about it, Judge. Do it. I'm going to give the people of this town an earful, and by George, it won't be any tea time melody. The Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a few seconds. Until the war is won, you homemakers won't be able to buy all the smooth, wholesome pab stats you want because vast quantities of dairy foods are being sent to our fighting fronts. But remember, each package of gold and delicious Pabstet cheese food you do buy goes a long way by lending its mellow, appetizing cheese flavor to other, more plentiful foods. You see, Pabstet melts with such luscious smoothness, it's no trick at all to whip up tempting Pabstet omelets, Welsh rabbits, soufflés, and prepare all kinds of grand macaroni and cheese dishes with Pabstet. You can get delicious sandwich variety with Pabstet, too, because it blends so smoothly with other ingredients. Pabstet is high in muscle-building milk protein, 
helps provide food energy, milk minerals, and important vitamin A. So look for, ask for, and when you can, buy this delicious nourishing food, Pabstet. Now let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. He's had a night of dreams in which he's pursued by little demons screaming at him. <laughs> but he's followed it with a day of purposeful and fairly fruitful activity. Judge Hooker has arranged for him to broadcast over station WSUM. He's written a speech with which he's mightily pleased, and now he's hurrying home to supper. But what is this he sees in Peavy's window? <laughs> oh, it's Peavy, my old friend. He can't do this to me. Peavy. Well, good afternoon, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> What can I do for you this fine day? Don't you try to soft soap me, Peavy. What's that Terwilliger poster doing in your window? Oh, that? Well, uh, Matt Terwilliger asked me to put it in there. But I'm your friend, Peavy. Terwilliger's just a stranger. I know, but he's a potential customer. Customer? You're money mad, Peavy. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Anything to get more customers. Anything to make a few more dollars. Well, there's two ways of looking at that. One is I'm in business and I have to make a small profit. The other is I'm performing a service. If I can extend the circle of my service, I feel I'm helping the community. You mean you're stealing a customer from the Atlas Drug Company? Mr. Gildersleeve, there's plenty of room for Peavy's Drugstore and the Atlas. Peavy, you're nothing but a hypocrite. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. I... <laughs> I try to be fair to all my customers, Mr. Gildersleeve. That's why I put your poster in the window and Terwilliger's. Confound it, Peavy. Can't you see that politics is not the same as peddling pills? Politics is a matter of convictions. You've got to be for me or Terwilliger. You can't be for both. Now, which are you for? Well, there are two ways of looking at that. <laughs> That's ridiculous. You're trying to mix business and politics, and it can't be done. Well, now, there's two sides to that question. <laughs> there's only one. Are you for me or Terwilliger? Mr. Gildersleeve, I like to look at these things from several angles. Quit stalling. Quit stalling, Peavy. Who are you for? Mm, I haven't decided yet. Peavy, I demand that you remove that Terwilliger poster from your window. Oh, dear. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, really, I, I couldn't do that. If you value my friendship, you will. Oh, I do. I do value it, only... Well? Oh, well, I promised Mayor Terwilliger I'd leave him in there until the primary is June 20th. But I'll tell you what I could do. What? I could put a war bond poster in front of him. Yeah. You're pretty cagey, PV. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> there. There you are, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, that's fine, Peavy. Not a trace of Terwilliger to be seen. Well, much obliged. And if you have any doubts that you're doing the right thing, just listen to my broadcast at 9.15 tonight. You're going on the air? Yeah. Just tune in station WSUM at 9.15, and you'll hear me put the blast on Terwilliger, Peavy. I'll pull no punches. Well, I'll certainly try to hear that. Listen in and tell your friends to listen, Peavy. Yes, so long. Goodbye, Mr. Gildersleeve. Politics, politics. I wonder... Now, what can I put in front of that Gildersleeve poster? <laughs> Throckmorton, are you sure you wouldn't like one of us to go down to the radio station with you? No, thanks, Eve. I'll be all right. You just stay here and listen with the family. I'd be glad to go along, Gildy, if you want me. You just make me nervous, Judge. Can I go, Uncle? I've never seen a radio station. <laughs> Leroy, I can't think of any situation in which you'd be more of a nuisance. Oh, I wouldn't be any nuisance, honest. I could just sit and play with the sound effects. <laughs> now, Leroy, you stay here and listen over the air. It'll be much more exciting that way. Okay, Miss Goodwin. You want to see a good trick? What kind of a trick? It's a kind Leroy, of... we'll have no tricks now, please. I've only got a few minutes before I leave, so just let us talk, if you don't mind. I wouldn't interrupt. Miss Goodwin could take a card and you could just keep talking. Take any card, Miss Goodwin. All right. Um, are you sure you don't want the judge to look over your speech, Throckmorton? No, Eve. Just wait till you hear it. Well, now I was... Now, place just... the card back in the deck, please. Uh, like this? That's fine. Uh, Throckmorton, I hope you won't be abusive or personal in your speech. Certainly not. But I'll hit straight from the shoulder. Well, I don't mind that, oh, but I what I... Oh, I forgot to tell you. You have to remember the card you drew. Do you remember it? Uh, 
No, no, Leroy, I don't. It was the Queen of Spades. Oh, for corn's sake, Judge, you didn't have to tell. Now you spoiled the trick. Take another card, Miss Goodwin. Leroy, stop that. <laughs> it's impossible for us to talk with this confounded vaudeville act going on. Okay, okay, go ahead and talk. Politics, blah, 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 Be blah. Careful, blah. young man. Uh, what I was saying, Throckmorton, was I see no reason for you to get personal just because Mayor Terwilliger descended to the personal level. There'll be nothing personal about it, Eve. Just facts. What kind of facts, Gilly? The worst ones I could find. <laughs> Throckmorton, that's the kind of thing you should be very careful about. Why, Eve? It's my duty to tell the public the kind of man my opponent is. That's very low politics, Throckmorton. Well, Terwilliger's a very low politician. <laughs> I'll say that, too. I think that's all wrong, dear. Really, I do. Well, if I don't... Throckmorton, isn't it about time for you to leave for the studio? In just a minute, my dear, I... Take any card, Marge. Any card at all. Leroy, give me that deck of cards. Oh, please, huh? Ye gods, you think I was just sitting around the house? <laughs> Don't anybody realize I'm about to go in the air? We all realize it, Throckmorton. Now, you mustn't get yourself excited. I'm not getting myself excited. But between Leroy and his card tricks and you and Hooker criticizing my speech, ye gods. Now, Gildy, just keep cool. There's nothing to be nervous about. I'm not nervous. I just like to sit quietly for a minute before I have to go. All right. Now, let's all be quiet. Now, this is just an ordinary deck of cards. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> but if someone in the audience will take one from the pack, I will cause it to disappear. Leroy, would you like me to cause you to disappear? <laughs> oh, gosh, Uncle, nobody was saying anything. I thought a trick would help you relax. That settles it. I'm leaving. Bye, George. I don't see how politicians can stand it. Stand what, Throckmorton? Well, if they haven't got a family, they can't run. And if they have, they can't think. <laughs> Uh, this way, Mr. Gildersleeve. The studio is right down the corridor. Uh, quite an establishment you have here, Mr. Stagg. Oh, you're so right, Mr. Gildersleeve, yes. WSUM has grown into a real institution. Oh, uh, here's our announcer. Carl. Uh, yes, Chief. Uh, this is Mr. Gildersleeve. He's making that political in Studio A at 9.15. Uh, this is Carl Crowfoot, Mr. Gildersleeve. Carl Crowfoot? Yes. Well, I've heard you on the air. <laughs> oh, well, you must be a fan of Tea Time Melodies, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, I never miss Tea Time Melodies. Fine program. Well, we try to make it a little different. You know, the average program of recordings is sort of, oh, well, you know. Yes. I try to make our Tea Time Hour say something to each listener. Great. Mm -hmm. We try to leave some lasting thought. Yeah, Terwilliger left some lasting thoughts yesterday. <laughs> well, I suppose I just leave you two here in the studio, and Carl can show you about the microphone and so on. Uh, yes, all right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Stagg. Okay. See you later. Uh, <laughs> and now, Mr. Gildersleeve, would you prefer to speak standing up, sitting down? What difference does that make? Well, we in radio have quite a few little tricks. We find that some people are a little nervous standing up. On the other hand, some get short of breath sitting down. I'll stand up. <laughs> That's fine. Now, uh, <clears throat> now, suppose you just read me the first line or so of your speech. What for? Well, so I can show you where to stand. We in radio consider that very important. Well, all right. <laughs> now, just a second till I run into the control. Uh, these announcers, you'd think there was something hard about this. All they do is stand there and read. All right, Mr. Gildersleeve, go ahead, please. Huh? Oh. Uh, fellow citizens, I can state my political philosophy very briefly. You're a little too far from the mic, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, too far, yes. eh? Yes. Well, I'll move in a little. Uh, that's it. All right, try it again, please. Uh, fellow citizens, I can state my political philosophy uh, very uh, briefly. Uh, uh, you're too close now. <laughs> How about here? Oh, that's just fine. Uh, fellow citizens, I can oh, state... Oh, that's perfect. Don't move now. I'll come out and mark him with chalk. Chalk? This is right where I would have stood in the first place if he hadn't been now, so. before I mark the spot, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'm just dying to know what is your political philosophy. Mayor Terwilliger is a dirty crook. Oh, I'm sorry, but you can't say that. Why not? Well, we in radio have little rules and regulations, you know. Now, if I could just glance over your speech first. On one condition, I won't change a word of it. Oh, now, Mr. Gildersleeve, I know you're joking. <laughs> uh, why don't you just call the mayor a political opportunist? Because he's a crook. Well, then call him a dishonest political opportunist. <laughs> Will you agree to that? If I have to. That's the spirit, Mr. Gildersleeve. That's radio. Teamwork is the big thing to we in radio. Well, 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 and how's our little political coming along? Oh, just fine, Mr. Stagg. Mr. Gildersleeve being very cooperative. Oh, that's good. So good. <laughs> uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, uh, you'll be going on in just a mo few moments now, but uh, there's a little formality to be taken care of. Oh, what's that? 
Uh, the matter of paying for the time. Paying? Yes, that'll be $75. $75? Listen here, Mr. Stagg. Mayor Terwilliger insulted me over your two-bit radio station. I'm simply demanding an opportunity to answer his unfounded charges. Uh, perhaps I can explain, Mr. Gildersleeve. We in radio have our little rules and regulations. And one of them is that political candidates have to pay for our time on the air. Well, I don't know anything about that, and I'm not going to pay a cent. Oh, but I'm sure Judge Hooker understood that you... Judge Hooker didn't say a word about money. Well, we have to have it. Well, you won't get it. And I'm going on the radio anyway. Oh, now, Mr. Gildersleeve, we in radio... We in radio give we in politics a big pain, brother. I stand on my constitutional rights. I'll send for my lawyer. I'll... I do hope everything goes well. Uh, what time is it, Judge? Just exactly 9.14 by my gold watch and chain. Won't be long now, as the monkey said when his tail got caught in the lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> Good, Judge. Do you know any more like that? Hush, Leroy. We ought to turn it on. The judge's watch may be wrong. Hadn't been wrong in 20 years, but I'll turn it on anyway. Gee, I wonder how Uncle sounds. He'll sound just fine. I'm afraid he'll sound like Gildersleeve. Oh, I do hope he isn't nervous. Yeah. WSUM, the voice of Summerfield. Uh, due to circumstances beyond our control, the political broadcast originally scheduled for this time will not be heard. We present at this time the music of Chuck Hazlitt and his ensemble. Their first selection, Glover. Judge, what on earth could have happened? Can't imagine, Eve. I'll go call the station right away. Stop the music! Stop it! Please, please, Mr. Gillsleeve. I don't care what the rules are. I demand to be heard. Oh, Throckmorton! Oh, boy, Uncle! We're on the air. I don't care. I'm going to be on the air, too. You, you can't do it. Don't tell me what I can't do. Have you ever heard of free speech, brother? Well, I'm going to have some. I'm sorry, but if you come one step nearer this microphone, I'll... Do what? Let go, you. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm being kept off the air by the... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we... We... We continue now with Chuck Hazlitt presenting... Blowworm. You certainly made a prime jackass of yourself on the air. It was your fault, Hooker. Why didn't you tell me they wanted money? Well, I tried to. Maybe after this you'll listen to me. You can't run a campaign without money. Yeah, guess you're right, Judge. But I haven't got any. I guess I'm licked. Now, now, don't be downhearted, Gildy. You got a lot of friends in this town. Friends? How do you mean? Well, your friends will all be glad to contribute to your campaign fund. I don't believe it. No nonsense. Anybody that wouldn't give $5... Well, he's no friend of yours, that's all. Hmm. How much can I put you down for, Horace? <laughs> Me? Yeah, let's start with you. Yeah. <laughs> you see what I mean, folks. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Music on this program was directed by Claude Sweet. And this is Ken Carpenter speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company, makers of Parquet Margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Kraft invites you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of the Great Builders League. And now listen real close, for here's the big exciting food news of the day. Point values of margarine have been sharply reduced by our government, cut from six points to only two ration points a pound. Think of it. Now, today, you can get your favorite spread for bread, economical parquet margarine, for only two ration points a pound. That is grand news and sure to be welcomed by the millions of American families who enjoy parquet margarine every day as a delicious spread for bread. Great news, too, for you homemakers concerned about good family nutrition because parquet is one of the best energy foods you can serve and is fortified by Kraft so that every pound of parquet margarine contains 9,000 units of vitamin A. So remember, it now takes only two ration points a pound for delicious, nourishing parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. <laughs>